In a previous video, we looked at eliminating the parameter uh, when you were looking at a circle. So in parametric form, we know what a circle looks like. Um, and to eliminate the parameter, we had to sort of utilize this identity. But sometimes it's not that um, tricky. Sometimes it's much more straightforward. So for instance, in the examples here below, eliminating the parameter can often be done or can often be achieved by uh, a simple substitution. So again, eliminating the parameter, remember the parameter is, is that variable t, and what we really want is an equation that just has x's and y's in it. So we want to sort of recover the Cartesian form of the equation. And so often a simple substitution can do the trick. Now once we do that, we're going to identify what the graph is. In other words, is it a line, a circle, a parabola? Um, so let's look at this first example here. Here is my parametric equations, and in order to eliminate the parameter, it's not so so bad. I can simply solve for t. So let's I'm going to look at the first. I'm going to look at that first equation, and I'm just going to solve this for t. So I'm going to minus one from both sides. X minus one equals negative seven t. And then I'm going to divide by negative 7. And now I have that t equals, so I'll write it like this, t equals uh, x minus 1 divided by negative 7. And that, that I can just put right in to the other equation for t. And if, by doing that, I get y equals 3 plus 2 times x minus 1 over negative 7. So we've eliminated the parameter, that part's done, but we do want to identify the graph, and so you might not, this is not, a, this is kind of an unusual way to leave a, an equation, so we're not going to leave it like that. What we're going to do is we're going to distribute that 2, I think, and we're going to write this as um, 3 plus, so the 2 multiplies to the top, 2x minus 2 over negative 7 and then that can break up to 3 plus uh, this this here becomes 2 over negative 7 x so I, or I can write this like that and then this negative 2 over negative 7 is just a positive 2 over 7. And so let's see, I mean I can add the 3 in this and get 3 and 2 sevenths. So I can rewrite this if I'd like as negative 2 sevenths x plus 3 and 2 sevenths. That's fine. So, so there's y. So that's another way to write it. And the reason I say that is because we're going to we're gonna now it's much more clear what it is. This is a line, right? This is just this is your typical mx plus b form, right? If you look at this, this is like your m, and this is your b, right? It's your mx plus b form, and so this is a line. With slope. Uh, negative two sevenths. All right, so that's identifying the graph pretty clearly. I think I would accept line with negative slope. That's fine too. Let's look at the next one. Again, the technique we can use is a simple substitution for this one. So I'm gonna work with the y one now. So y equals nine plus t. If I just minus nine, I get y minus nine equals t. And now I can take this and put it right in for t in the other equation. And when I do that, I get uh, x equals 4 minus 2 times y minus 9. And then this becomes, let's block this off here. This becomes 4 minus 
2y plus 18. And continuing a little bit more, we get, um, I'm going to add the 4 and the 18, and I'm going to add 2y to both sides. So I think that that's okay to leave it like that. I added 2y to both sides and added the 4 and the 18. Now, one little thing I want to note, point out is that this we can't just say this is a line because of that. Now, this here means that we're on, this, this graph is only going to be traced for t values in between 0 and 3. And that's going to result in a line segment, not a line, right? So on the, this example here, there was no stipulation on the time, which basically just means you know, time goes from negative infinity to infinity. And in that case, you're just graphing this line below. Um, so, and, and by the way, you know what, I should really circle the answer. I want to do that down here. Just so you know, that's the... Eliminate the parameter and identifying the graph. Um, here, we eliminate the parameter. The graph is a line segment. A line segment because of this here, the stipulation on the time values. It wouldn't trace the whole thing, it would just trace for three seconds. And let's try this last example here. Again, I can use a substitution, but this time I can't use either or. It looks like uh, solving this for t would be a little bit more difficult than solving this one for t. So I'm going to solve the bottom one for t. So that's easy, minus 1 from both sides. And I get 5y minus 1. 5y minus 1 equals t. And now I can put this right in here. And when I do that, I get x equals 2 times 5y minus 1 squared plus 4. Now, it might be tempting to try to solve this for y, but I definitely don't recommend that. I think we're done eliminating the parameter. And what we have here is, first of all, it's an equation uh, for x in terms of y, which is a little unusual. Um, and also we've got a squared, so this 5y minus 1 squared means that we're going to be looking at a quadratic, but since the x and the y are reversed, it's going to be sort of sideways. You know, it's going to be either that guy or that guy, as opposed to the ones that face up and down. And which one is it? Well, since this 2 here is positive, if you remember from Algebra 2, that determined whether your parabola opened up or down. And now, since we're dealing with uh, left and rightness, it's positive, which means the parabola is going to open right. So our answer is parabola that opens right. Okay, so there we are. Eliminating the parameter using substitution works very well. And then um, identifying the graph. Uh, the, really the ones we're going to focus on are circles, which we saw in the last video, lines, line segments, and parabolas.